Hello, I am Chef Aarti Thapa. Welcome to Sanjeev Kapoor Khazana. Today, I am going to demonstrate blown sugar technique. So we are doing a small sculpture using blown sugar technique. I will be showing you a pair of swans. For that, we have to cook isomalt in the same manner as we did for pulled sugar. You can refer to my previous video wherein I demonstrated pulled sugar flowers and ribbons. We will be cooking isomalt in exactly the same manner. So we have to start with melting of isomalt with little water till it becomes crystal clear and we have to cook it to 160 degrees centigrade. So this is 500 grams of isomalt with 50 ml of water. I am using an induction plate for melting this. You can do it on a regular burner as well. We have to melt it properly so that there is no grain of isomalt pending in the liquid. Once the liquid is crystal clear, we will be bringing up the temperature to 160 degrees centigrade for which we will use this thermometer to check the temperature. Using this technique, I will be making two swans for you. For placing my swans, I will be casting a base uh, made up of two teardrop shaped pieces and few half spheres. I have chosen blue color for it. You can choose your own color. Before you cast, just ensure that the shape is perfect because later you cannot change it. Okay, so I am casting molten isomalt in half sphere molds and once they cool down, we will have nice crystal clear half spheres which I wish to place in between these two pieces of cast sugar for placing these wands. So this isomalt is ready. I will be pouring it over a silicone mat and I will pull it using the same technique as we followed for pulled sugar ribbon. So we have to wait for it to cool down slightly and we have to collect it from the sides and start pulling it. It will turn absolutely white while I pull it. I am going to pull this isomalt. This isomalt I will be using to demonstrate blown sugar technique and we will create swans out of it. We have to always start from the sides and we have to push it in the center so as to ensure that it cools down evenly. Once it stops flowing, we have to start pulling it. So you can see it has almost stopped flowing so I can start with the pulling technique. As I told you earlier, it has to be pulled in the same manner as we did for pulled sugar ribbons. You can refer to the previous video wherein I demonstrated pulled sugar flower and ribbons uh, to know more details about pulled sugar technique. So I am trying to pull air into this hot piece of sugar. When you are trying this, please make sure that you are wearing proper gloves because the temperature is high, you may burn your hands. So I am just stretching this piece of sugar, twisting it and turning it back. For this particular piece, I mean this size, you have to pull it um, around 20 to 22 times and keep pulling it till it becomes shiny and it looks satiny and it turns white in color and at the same time it starts getting cooled down. So pull, twist, turn, pull, twist, turn. So if you observe it has started becoming whitish in color and it is getting shiny. Once you achieve perfect shine you can stop pulling. I am not pressing it too much, I am just folding it with light hands and pulling it and turning it back. I am trying to incorporate air into it so that it turns whitish and satiny. You can add colors into this sugar and make different colored ribbons 
you can try different types of flowers and today i'll be demonstrating a pure white swan out of this piece of pulled sugar so it's ready to be cut when i cut it i make it flat so that it cools down easily and it cools down faster so we have to leave these pieces for cooling down properly they are still soft and pliable we have to make them hard and let them get dry and once they are ready we can start using them for ribbons or swans as i told earlier we have to store them in an airtight container with silica gel so that they do not absorb any moisture so for this pair of swans i wish to do a ribbon so i've chosen a color scheme of red and white so i'm using two pieces one white and one red to create a ribbon as you observed in the last video we created a yellow and green ribbon same way we have to do this ribbon which is slightly thinner in size so these two strips have joined together and i wish to create stripes so i am giving it one more turn here like this so once i get the desired color scheme and the pattern i can start pulling the ribbon so i wish to do a thin ribbon for the swan so i am pulling it little more than the last ribbon i did that was yellow and green i want to create a small bow and a curl of ribbon so for the bow pieces i am cutting ribbon into thin and small strips whereas for the curl i have cut it into a bigger piece like this this ribbon won't look good like this so we have to give it a twist so what i'm going to do is i'm warming it up under the lamp you can use a salamander also for this thing and we have to twist it around this dowel and we have to wait till it cools completely and retains its shape once it is set i'll be pulling this small rolling pin out and i'll have a nice red and white ribbon curl in my hands i think it's ready so you can see so this is a ribbon which is done similarly i wish to do a small bow for this i have cut smaller pieces so for folding them i'll be again warming them up and curling them to give a loop shape so when i join two three loops together it will give me a bow effect which i can use along with the swans on my show piece so like this we can place them together they look like a bow so i've done four small loops and i wish to join them together to create a small flower like this this strip was broken while i was doing a ribbon i don't want to waste it so i'm going to twist it to we'll use it on our show piece small ribbon which i have done for this one so the base is ready it has cooled down completely so i'm going to remove it from the silicone mat and let's see how it has come it has come out really beautiful it is looking like a tear drop shape this piece is also done so what we are going to do is we are going to place these two pieces one over the other with half spheres in the center so let us see if half spheres are done yes here it is so i'll take out all they're looking really pretty we'll make them even more shiny by using blow torch so these uneven edges can be made neat by using a blow torch i'll just show you how so slightly with the help of blow torch i am going to melt it and make it neat and another magical thing i'm going to show you once i focus blow torch on the top 
it is going to become absolutely clear and transparent let us see if it happens see it's become shiny by the use of blow torch similarly i am going to uh, clean all the uh, half surfaces like this and we are going to assemble the base so i'm going to join all the pieces together using molten isomalt putting small small drops of isomalt wherein i am going to stick my surfaces so this molten isomalt will act as a glue and will stick the pieces together we can even use isomalt here like this and place it on the piece so i wish to place this piece above these so i'm going to put small small drops of isomalt here and i am going to place the second piece on top of these saphirs so you can see the base is ready for the placement of swans i'm sure it is looking nice so in this blob of sugar i'm trying to blow air so i've made it like this so i'll be crinkling the edges and i'll place the tip of blow pump here and i'll pinch it nicely so that i am able to blow air into this piece so i'm trying to fix this tip of blow pump at the mouth of this blob and i will try to blow air into it i have to ensure that the air does not come out so i am fixing it nicely here so now i'll check if air is going into it if you can see it is growing right so what i have to do is i have to shape the neck of the swan and at the same time i have to blow air into it i have to make sure that it is thin and cylindrical here and at the same time i have to cool it so i have to ensure that it cools down properly so that it retains its shape so i'm cooling it in front of the fan till the time it becomes absolutely stable now it is almost set what we have to do is we have to now uh, melt it here to cut it off from the blow pump so i i am using a blow torch again to melt it here so here is one swan we will be doing another swan like this following the same process i will be doing a small wing over here using pulled sugar technique and i'll be painting the beak and eyes using a thin painting brush and edible gel colors so the swan is ready i'm trying to pull a nice feather for it so the remaining piece of sugar i have melted it and i'll be pulling a feather for the swan using this piece so i've made it soft and i am using the same technique of pulled sugar for this piece and like we pulled petals for the pulled sugar rose i'll be pulling a feather for this swan so we can put one or we can put even two so i'll make two three just in case it breaks while joining so this is same technique which can be used for creating flowers you can create like 10 20 petals like this and join them together to make a flower as well so i'm just trying to pull a nice feather for this swan so the swan is ready it, it has cooled down and uh, it has retained the shape so now we can uh, uh, paint the beak as well as the eyes so i'm using a thin brush painting brush for this and i'm using yellow gel color for the beak so for eyes i'll be using black color and little black line i'll be putting here and at top of the beak so i've painted the eye and the beak with the yellow and black color i think it has added 
life to this swan now i'll be joining the feathers for joining the feathers with this swan i'm using molten isomol and i'm going to stick this feather with the body of the swan so i'll do another piece here so that it looks really pretty similarly we can put two feathers this side as well so you can see this piece is ready to go on the final show piece so now the swan is ready we are ready for the final assembly the base is done and we are ready with the ribbon and small bows let us assemble them together on this base and let's see how it looks i am again using molten isomol to stick the pieces together so i'll place this small bow here with a small drop of molten isomol i am just joining it here so the three loops can be joined together like this it looks like a lovely bow so you can place it near this swan somewhere i think this red color will give a nice combination to this white swan so i've just joined these three pieces together like this i can place it somewhere here so i'm just dipping it in isomol and this is ready for final placement so dear friends it is ready for presentation here goes a beautiful swan on a base of teardrop with a lovely red and white ribbon and a bow i hope you like it so today we created a beautiful piece of art using three techniques casting blowing and pulling with casting i did these bases and with pulled sugar i did this white and red ribbon and with blown sugar technique i did this beautiful swan and i did little bit of painting at the beak and on the eyes to add life to this swan i hope you have liked it and i'm sure you're thrilled to try this beautiful piece of sugar art thank you